So I'm pleased to be here again to share the WPI progress in our ongoing research for answers to neuroimmune diseases such as ME, fibromyalgia, Gulf War illness, post-Lyme disease, and autism. We've determined that many of these diseases present similarly and that so many of those people are suffering just as you are with ME. We, uh, I'd also like to thank you all for your support the last several years. It has meant everything to us to have your notes, your good wishes, and um, a tremendous outpouring of support. Thank you so much. Uh, we began this journey in 2006 to create a home for the study and treatment of patients and to bring knowledge and legitimacy to diseases that impact you, your families, and millions more around the world. This past August brought added attention to the WPI and neuroimmune disease as a growing threat to global health with the grand opening of ceremonies on the Nevada Medical School campus. We now have three critical components of the Institute open and working full time, administration, research, and a new clinical laboratory. This July, we'll open the much anticipated medical practice at the Institute. WPI's medical clinic will not only allow patients to access more effective treatments, but it will provide a home for the clinical trials of new pharmaceutical treatments in a truly translational manner. WPI's research is already supported by an expert team of physicians and research scientists from many different fields of medicine, including neurology, infectious disease, immunology, pediatrics, HIV AIDS, and oncology. This group of highly experienced physicians is dedicated to providing valuable medical input to help WPI develop more precise protocols for patient diagnosis, treatment, and using a systems biology approach to disease. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, I think many of you have seen this picture before. Uh, prior to our talks, we've just had a photo of it, but this is the actual building. So we're very, very proud to be connected to that beautiful building on your left. You'll see it is three floors of incredible research space with over 70 different researchers um, and many, many disciplines. We have a connected walkway to the medical facility, and we're the top two floors of the building that you see in the front of the picture. So translating scientific research into patient care, many challenges, but also many opportunities exist. The challenges in this disease start with the diagnosis, which is currently based on a group of symptoms. There's no agreed upon consistent biological markers of disease, multiple definitions using common and misunderstood symptom fatigue, requires waiting six months for a diagnosis. Not all patients have the same symptoms, and those symptoms wax and wane. Patients can have mild, moderate, and severe illness that may require different interventions. And the disease affects multiple areas of the body at once. So where to begin? We know that it can result, this disease can result in serious and debilitating symptoms, immune dysfunctions, cognitive disorders, seizures, sleep disorders, severe pain, ataxia, exercise intolerance, lymphadenopathy, severe headaches, nausea, and diarrhea, orthostatic intolerance, night sweats, and profound fatigue and weakness. And anyone looking at those symptoms that can stand and look at you and say, it's all in your head is absolutely insane. I, 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 don't, I don't know how many of you can just look at another person and tell the minute you meet them that they're ill with this disease, but I think I've gotten pretty good at that, and I'm amazed at any physician that can stand there and try to tell me my daughter's not ill. A research advisory board was developed, and um, they helped Dr. Mikovits. Often we need to make a little phone call to talk about some of the results, and they've always been there to help lend a helping hand. Is ME an acquired immune deficiency disorder? Well, there's abnormal NK cell function and number, inflammatory cytokines, antiviral pathway dysfunctions, chronic active infections, and now a human retrovirus, XMRV, associated with patients that may cause immune deficiency. So I looked at, took a little bit uh, look at the MS research and compared that with ME. Multiple sclerosis, first of all, the funding is $135 million a year Next, compared to the funding of ME, which is $6 million a year. They started out with an examination of brain tissue and found inflammation in the blood vessels. Where are postmortem tissue studies? They examined, they, uh, 
found that vaccination sometimes resulted in MS and looked at the immune cells attacking the myelin. We have found inflammatory cytokines point to abnormal inflammation in the brain and the body as well. They found abnormal proteins in the spinal fluid. The T cells could transmit disease from one animal to another. We need disease transmission studies. ME have, patients have abnormal levels of antibodies to many viruses, as MS people do. We need studies on autoimmunity in ME because we find that it may be both infectious and autoimmune. But finally, brain scans changed the way MS was diagnosed. And now they have standard biomedical diagnostic guidelines, and that is what this disease needs. Is it an autoimmune disease? There have been some studies to show that people with ME or chronic fatigue syndrome have autoantibodies. Finally, is ME an infectious disease? And that is any disease caused by the entrance, growth, and multiplication of microorganisms in the body, a germ disease. It may not be contagious. So let's look at ME. It occurs after sudden onset, after a flu-like illness. It occurs in outbreaks and coworkers and families. Patients shown to have, suffer from ME with chronic infections from multiple human pathogens, multiple family members are impacted, and certainly men, women, and children are ill with ME. It is not simply women that are sick. Many pathogens have been found associated with ME patients. And XMRVs, or retroviruses, originating, originating from mammals cause immune deficiencies, neurological disease, and cancers. Most highly associated is the most highly associated virus in ME to date. HHV6 causes roseola, meningitis, EBV, mononucleosis, and cancer, Burkett's lymphoma, and CME causes many forms of disease. There are enteroviruses, gastrointestinal disease, bacterial infections, parasites, fungal infections, and tick-borne diseases have all been con yeah, uh, con contributing to this illness. So I took a look at HIV and MA, and I remember the first day that I ever saw uh, begins with a flu-like illness, fever, headache, sore throat, swollen lymph glands. And I thought, well, that's strange. That looks just like what happens in ME. Slow, swollen lymph nodes, often one of the first signs of ME. There it is in HIV. Patients may appear well for a period of 10 years with HIV, and in ME, patients have periods of relapse and remissions. They experience the same kinds of gastrointestinal problems, low-grade fever, fever in HIV, new or more severe allergies, unusual fatigue in both diseases, night sweats in both diseases, susceptibility to infections, cognitive decline. And where we differ a little bit, and we're not sure what that means, but sexually transmitted disease, we know that HIV, it's a little more difficult to get than ME, but uh, it does not, and it does not occur in families and in outbreaks. So we did not start out looking for a retrovirus. In fact, we were looking for a herpes virus at the beginning of this episode of study, and we found that there was only about 10% of those people in that viral array that actually were having difficulty with herpes virus 6, but instead we found a tremendous load of infections. And at that point, Dr. Mikovits, whose uh, background is in retrovirology and cancer, started thinking that maybe perhaps there was a more significant pathogen underlying all of the findings in that viral array. And you'll see that there, is, there have been some studies that have identified uh, where this virus goes. Once it goes into the bloodstream, it clears the blood and infects tissues, but returns with stimulation. Multiple methods are most reliable for detecting XMRV. And there was a new antibody paper out just recently that showed that antibodies are robust and then decrease considerably which may explain the differences in many test results. So XMRV, contamination or a human virus? So I'd want everyone to know here that the tests in both the uh, ALTER and LOW studies and those done at the WPI show absolutely no contamination. XMRV is human, and it is not a mouse contaminant. XMRV is a new human gamma retrovirus associated with infectious disease and cancer. And I'm sure those of you in here that have already read about 
probably a lot more about retroviruses than you ever thought you wanted to know. I know I have learned quite a bit standing next to Dr. Mikovits and listening and having the opportunity to talk to our researchers. It's been a phenomenal education. So is there evidence of a family of retroviruses in ME? We believe that there are very solid evidence, and Dr. Mikovits will talk to you about that in a little bit. Here are some of the studies that we've learned about XMRV and what parts of the body this virus goes into and infects. The opportunities research allows for the creation of a biological definition of disease. Biological research provides clinical diagnostic tools and answers that allow doctors to follow clinical trials. Your diagnosis is more accurate and more timely, and patient treatments will be more specific. This is just some of the um, sciences that we use in a systems biology approach to provide new answers. Immunology, neurology, endocrinology, retrovirology, virology, proteinomics, exercise physiology, genetic susceptibility, inflammatory markers, genomics, epidemiology, and bioinformatics. All of those areas will be employed and are being employed in order to find the answers to your disease. So these research, uh, this research points to biomarkers of disease, and these are just some of the tests that can be done in order to identify some of the deficits. The clinical advisory board that we have, I mentioned earlier, um, in includes infectious disease, neurology, pediatrics, immunology, endocrinology, oncology, and an HIV expert. Treatment plans, and that's what you all came today, I, I, I think, to hear a little bit about. It is not that they are specifically designed at this point, but that rather when you come to be a patient, you would have tests that would identify those areas where you needed treatment the most. However, we believe that people in this disease, with this disease, need support of their immune system. They need antivirals or antiretrovirals to suppress pathogens, and we need to address the nutritional deficiencies and hormonal imbalances. So here you have a beautiful <laughs> and complicated plan that Dr. Mikovits and our team put together called the WPI networks. And in the center, you'll see the WPI. And from that goes below at the bottom, immunological and micro microbial, microbial data, neuroimmune database, and sample repository, one of the largest in the world, the WPI. MECFS gene identification, we have genetic data. We have uh, WPI-sponsored products, uh, projects. So those results and discussions are shared then with clinicians. They go through the clinical laboratory to discover and design new laboratory biomarkers. We hope someday to have clinicians in worldwide hospitals and disease specialists at universities to teach and educate, and a neuroimmune training network. All of this goes through the research gateway, where we would have access to open access to bioinformatics. In other words, bringing groups of people together from other countries. <laughs> Moving forward, educating physicians and attracting new physicians to the field is very important. Medical education and expert seminars, medical student internships, residencies, and fellowships. We need to continue pharmaceutical drug development and begin on-site clinical trials and create models for worldwide patient treatment centers. We also would, uh, and have already started doing this, helping partners around the world with developing their clinical research centers, and we hope to see one day, and perhaps next year, we'll be standing here celebrating the opening of your medical research center here in London. So what can government do? They can mandate more research support. I wanted to show you very quickly that MECFS is on the very bottom down there, and uh, West Nile virus, the next one, one virus, and then we have MS. And I'm not here to, to pick on people that have MS. I think it's a terrible disease, and it is a very serious illness. It's here to compare with the possibilities, to show you what the possibilities are when you have a biomarker for a disease and how much uh, resources, how many resources we could bring to this disease. So what can you do? Become an advocate for your disease. Write and visit your governmental leaders. Tell them your personal story. Download materials from our website. It'll help you educate your families and your friends. 
help support the research and clinical trials. And please vote for WPI on Chase Community Giving. Right now we're in about 10th place and it's a $500,000 award in approximately a couple of weeks. And your vote would mean so much to us and also help us move this field forward. Thank you so much. Oh, I did want to say one last thing. Um, I want all of you to recognize that there are going to be in any new and groundbreaking research, there are always going to be those who stand up and immediately want to push it away, want to make it disappear, especially in this disease. I'd like all of you to keep an open mind whenever you read anything, because right now this is a very, very important time of brand new discovery. We certainly, certainly do not know everything. We're changing test methods. We're looking at all of the different aspects of this virus, and we think it's very, very important to continue that research and really take a good hard look at whether or not this pathogen is significant in this disease or not. Thank you so much for your time.